Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo made headlines with a statement during a radio interview, Taiwan has never been a part of China. This was acknowledged by the Reagan administration and formulating its policy towards Taiwan and the United States has upheld this view for 35 years. Since its establishment in Beijing in 1949, the People's Republic of China has never had sovereignty over Taiwan. Taiwan has consistently maintained its independence, first under the governance of Chiang Kai-shek, who aimed to reclaim the mainland. Since the early March 20, 2024, Taiwan has been a dynamic democracy, eager for recognition as a formal and equal member of the international community. In particular, one of the clauses in the six assurances issued by President Reagan in July 1982 clarified that the IAS has not changed its position on the sovereignty of Taiwan. Reagan referenced the stance based on the 1951-1952 San Francisco Peace Treaty, which considered Taiwan's international status as undetermined. According to this treaty, Japan officially renounced sovereignty over the island without specifying a recipient. Peace Conference in 1951 largely agreed that Taiwan's status to be resolved in due course is on the self-determination principle outlined in the United Nations Charter. Regarding the claim that Taiwan has always been part of China, particularly during the Ming and Qing dynasties, it's essential to scrutinize the evidence. When the Dutch East India Company arrived in Taiwan in 1624, there was no indication of Ming Dynasty 1368-1644 governance. In fact, the Dutch, who had initially settled in the Pescadores Islands in 1622, were told by the Ming Emperor to leave our land. The Dutch then moved to what was known as Formosa, ruling the island for 38 years, marking Taiwan's first instance of formal governance, thus not under the Ming Dynasty's domain. In 1662, Ming loyalists in Zhengon fled the nascent Qing dynasty, capturing Taiwan from the Dutch after a nine-month siege, establishing his rule. This regime lasted 21 years, until his grandson surrendered to the king in 1683. Then's governance independent of the bygone Ming, and before Qing consolidation, highlights a period of autonomy. The Qing dynasty aimed not to conquer Taiwan but to dismantle Zhen's base. Emperor Kangxi's remark in 1683, Taiwan is beyond our realm not a significant concern even contemplating selling it back to the Dutch underscores the king's initial disinterest. However, Taiwan did come under king rule for over 200 years, marked by indirect governance and over 100 recorded rebellions reflecting resistance to foreign Manchu rule. In 1887, facing colonial pressures, the king formally made Taiwan a province to bolster defences against French and Japanese ambitions, a modernization effort spearheaded by Lu Mingxuan that lasted merely eight years. Following Japan's victory over China in 1895, Taiwan was ceded to Japan, leading to the short-lived Republic of Formosa, an attempt by Taiwanese elites to avoid Japanese annexation. Despite its brief existence, it signified strong resistance to foreign domination. Under Japanese rule, Taiwan saw infrastructure and healthcare improvements, becoming a prosperous colony. During this time, neither the Nationalist Kump nor the Communist Kump in China showed interest in Taiwan, with both leaders reportedly supporting Taiwanese independence from Japan, a stance that shifted only during World War I, positioning Taiwan as a point of contention between the two parties. Post-World War I, Taiwan's status remained ambiguous until the San Francisco Peace Treaty, with the Republic of China rock assuming temporary administrative control. The US, while never officially recognizing Taiwan as part of the PERC, has navigated a complex relationship emphasizing Taiwan's democratic progress and self-determination, contrasting with the CUP's claim of sovereignty over Taiwan. Taiwan, evolving into a vibrant democracy under the Democratic Progressive Party DP, seeks international recognition and participation, distinct from the CUP's narrative. Pompeo's acknowledgement of Taiwan's distinct identity and rights challenges the narrative imposed by the KISPI, recognizing Taiwan's aspiration for international equality and dignity. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like.